What's good, y'all? As of this video, we have five more manga arcs left to cover, but don't think it'll end there. I've still got a lot more Dragon Ball content planned for you guys, and I think you're gonna like what comes next. Also, before I forget, subscribe to my second channel if you haven't already. Some of you guys have been asking me to cover other manga the way I do Dragon Ball for a while now, so at some point, I'm gonna be uploading on that channel as well. Anyways, I'm debating on covering the Red Ribbon Army story or the Universe 6 story next. The poll I created favored the Red Red Ribbon Army, but as I said in the comments of that poll, the decision for the video will be made here. That said, if you guys really want to see the Red Ribbon Army story next, let's get to 200,000. Nah, I'm, I'm just playing. Let's get to 2,000 likes in 24 hours, and that'll be the next story we cover. Matter of fact, let's just get started right now. Go ahead and click the like button. I'll wait. Lastly, before we get into this, I want to take a moment to thank all of our channel members. I really appreciate all the support for my videos and your continued contributions really motivate me to keep going and I can't forget about my subscribers, man, y'all. The amount of positive feedback I get on my videos is astounding. Thank you all for your continued support. We're on the road to 200K subscribers, so let's get it as soon as possible. Great things in 2024. Let's get into the video. The 23rd World Tournament takes place after the events of the Demon King Piccolo arc. At the summit of Korin Tower, Goku revels in his victory, having been healed by Korin via a sensu bean. Korin extends his congratulations to Goku for defeating King Piccolo, although he states he wasn't sure if he'd actually be able to do it. Yajirobe questions if Korin practically sent Goku to his death, but in the event of Goku's demise, Korin claims he would have personally gathered the Dragon Balls to resurrect him and his friends. Goku is taken aback by Korin's knowledge of the Dragon Balls, to which Korin asserts his all-encompassing awareness, stating there's nothing nothing he doesn't know. However, Yajirobe informs Korin of Shenron's demise at the hands of Piccolo, which surprises him. Goku grows angry, wishing he could revive his friends, but Yajirobe dismisses their deaths as part of their destiny. Korin then states that the problem with their deaths is that their souls can't rest in peace as they were killed by demons. When Goku inquires about this, Korin elaborates, revealing that the souls of those slain by the demon clan won't move on, but will linger in the universe for eternity. Goku insists on finding a way to revive everyone, but Korin deems it impossible without Shenron. Suddenly, Korin recalls a crucial detail he'd forgotten, contacting the creator of the Dragon Balls to revive Shenron. Goku seeks the identity of the creator, and Korin discloses that it's none other than Kami, otherwise known as God. Goku is unfamiliar with this entity, and Yajirobe immediately dismisses it as fake, prompting Korin to explain that he's indeed real, but only sees those who are strong, brave, and pure of heart. This makes Goku eligible to meet him, but Yajirobe Yajirobe, unfortunately, doesn't meet the criteria. Curious about Kami's whereabouts, Goku learns that his palace is situated above Korin Tower. Yajirobe expresses disbelief, but Korin tells him to shut up and clarifies that they can't see the palace because it's too high to be seen from their vantage point. Goku suggests using the flying Nimbus to get there, but Korin dismisses the idea, stating that it can only fly as far as his tower. Yajirobe proposes stealing a rocket, but Korin says it won't work as it would be rejected mid-flight. Korin then insists that the only way to reach Kami's palace is by using the power pole to get there. Goku wonders about this, and Korin explains that the power pole was originally created to connect the earth to Kami's sanctuary. He states that he lent it to Master Roshi a while back, not thinking that anyone would actually need it. Realizing it was passed down to him from his grandpa Gohan, Goku reaches for the power pole to get started, but discovers it's missing. Panicking, and reminded that he misplaced his pole after his battle with Piccolo, Goku calls on the flying Nimbus, leaving quickly to find it. Unable to find the power pole on the battlefield, Goku continues to panic at the thought of not being able to revive his friends, but suddenly recalls that fortune teller Baba could locate it for him. He visits her, requesting assistance in locating the staff, prepared to repeat the custom of fighting her five challengers in order to get the information. However, Baba insists that nobody wants to fight the person who killed Demon King Piccolo, and offers to reveal the location to Goku for free. After a quick reading, Baba reveals the power pole is at Kame House. Confused on what it's doing there, Goku takes off as Baba thinks on how Goku actually managed to save the Earth. Soon after, Goku arrives at Kame House, rushes in, and is greeted by his remaining friends. In a hurry, he grabs the power pole and excitedly announces his plan to visit God and restore life to his friends as he takes off, leaving everyone confused at what he just said. Back at Korin Tower, Goku, with the power pole in hand, catches his breath. Korin instructs Goku to place the staff in a connector on the tower's roof, which will extend to reach Kami's sanctuary. Korin then provides 
Goku with a bell as a symbol to prove his worth, and despite Yajirobe's concern about Goku's appearance in his tattered clothing, Korin assures him it won't matter as they'll get messed up anyway, confusing the two. Goku seeks clarification, wondering if Kami is violent, but Korin states he's a great man, but elaborates that Goku will undergo a test in the divine realm, expressing confidence in Goku's abilities. Though Yajirobe is uneasy about the prospect, Goku remains unconcerned. With determination, Goku activates the power pole, propelling himself upward. Korin anticipates Goku's reaction upon encountering Kami's face, and Yajirobe questions if he's ugly. Korin says yes, but states his face will look quite familiar. As the power pole ascends, Goku finally sees the colossal spherical structure in the distance and draws closer. The staff halts, connecting to a large fixture with a small hole at its tip. Goku notices a ladder above him, skillfully uses his tail to reach it, and ascends from the power pole to reach the sanctuary. He finally arrives at his destination, the tiled floor lacking walls or a ceiling, featuring meticulously maintained trees and a temple on the opposite side. In the center of it all though, stands a figure with distinctive features, black skin, large eyes, and lips. Greetings exchanged, Goku queries if the figure is Kami, only to discover he's Mr. Popo, Kami's servant. Mr. Popo wonders how Goku managed to defeat Piccolo, surprising Goku of his knowledge of the battle, but Mr. Popo claims that Kami knows all. Goku expresses curiosity about Kami's dwelling and expresses his desire to visit. To gain entry though, Mr. Popo demands proof of Korin's approval. Goku presents the bell, prompting Mr. Popo to initiate a test, a match against himself. He states that if Goku wins, he'll earn the privilege of meeting Kami. Confident, Goku readies himself and begins with an after image technique, but Mr. Popo effortlessly lands a punch, surprising Goku. Unfazed and assuming it to be a lucky hit, Goku charges again, asserting the match will end with one powerful hit. However, Mr. Popo casually delivers another successful punch to Goku's face. Popo jokes about him being lucky again and calls Goku weak, wondering again how he ever managed to defeat Piccolo. Irritated by being labeled weak, Goku intensifies his efforts. He launches a kick, but Mr. Popo dodges, surprising Goku as he's kicked away. Goku manages to use the terrain to launch himself back at Mr. Popo, but the figure blocks his attack once more, grabs his leg, and tosses him across the sanctuary with ease. Mr. Popo taunts Goku once more, and frustrated, Goku refuses to accept his perceived weakness and continues to engage Mr. Popo in combat. Despite a flurry of attacks, eventually ending with Goku attempting a devastating swipe, Mr. Popo effortlessly evades and counters each move. Disappointed, Mr. Popo dismisses the test as futile, advising Goku to quit and return home as he sits in awe. Goku can't believe what's happening, as Mr. Popo informs him that defeating Piccolo doesn't make him the strongest in the world. Despite Popo urging him to return home, Goku insists on meeting with Kami to revive everyone. Goku then proposes using the location for special training, to which Popo grants permission, although he expresses skepticism about its effectiveness. Goku thanks him as Mr. Popo notes he's pretty cool, and as Goku attempts to run laps around the sanctuary, he succumbs to dizziness due to the thin oxygen level at such high altitudes. Mr. Popo imparts wisdom on Goku, stating his wasted movements work against him, and says he needs to stay as calm as the sky and move faster than lightning. Goku struggles with the concept, and Popo demonstrates the first step by emptying his soul as he goes still, Goku noting he can't sense his energy at all. Goku attempts to do the same, but Mr. Popo says he's only stealing his mind and that stealing his heart is different. Mr. Popo then demonstrates moving faster than lightning as he suddenly appears behind Goku, leaving him astounded. Popo explains that Goku relies on his sight too much and needs to sharpen his spirit in order to feel the slightest movements in the atmosphere. Goku acknowledges how great Mr. Popo is and says it's no wonder he couldn't defeat him. Mr. Popo then reveals that Kami is even stronger than him, surprising Goku but exciting him as he finds it great to meet someone so powerful. Goku questions why Mr. Popo and Kami didn't defeat Piccolo, and Popo explains that they had their reasons. Encouraged by Mr. Popo to continue training until he can surpass him, Goku is unfazed by the potential years it may take, and excitedly says he'll stay as long as he needs to in order to revive his friends. Suddenly, a voice calls out, revealing Kami's presence. Kami says he's pleased with Goku, and will see him right away, exciting the boy as he and Mr. Popo walk toward the temple. As the two stand in front of the temple's entrance, a figure peeks from around the corner and Kami emerges. Goku, shocked to see a figure resembling Piccolo, reacts impulsively as he charges at Kami, but the latter effortlessly flicks him away as he's caught by Mr. Popo. Popo 
tells Goku to calm down, as the being before him isn't Piccolo. Kami then calls Korin a prankster for purposely not informing Goku of his resemblance to Piccolo or the history behind it. Kami reveals that long ago, he and Piccolo were once a single martial artist seeking guidance from the previous Kami who inhabited the lookout. Unfortunately, the previous Kami was dying and this Kami sought to take his place. However, the previous Kami wouldn't allow it as he noticed his potential successor was harboring an evil deep within his heart. With extensive training, Kami expelled the evil which manifested itself as the Demon King Piccolo, wreaking havoc on Earth until Goku's victory over him. As a token of gratitude, Kami offers to grant Goku's wish to revive his friends, under the condition that he stay with him to train a bit longer, to which Goku states he wanted to do that anyway. Kami then reveals that he can resurrect Shinron to grant the wish for Goku, but warns him that once it's fulfilled, this will be the last time he does it. Kami says that Goku and the Earthlings need to be able to depend on their own strength, and moves to reactivate the Dragon Balls as Goku thanks him for his help. Kami instructs Mr. Popo to fetch Shinron, and he returns with a glass encased Shinron statue in pieces, mirroring the real Shinron state. Kami requests Popo to repair it, and as Popo meticulously reassembles the statue, Goku inquires about its origin. Popo reveals that he crafted it, and Kami has the ability to bring it to life. Kami then says that in truth, he didn't plan on reviving Shenron, as he created him to instill hope for the people of Earth, but all they've done is use him for their own selfish desires. Kami acknowledges Goku's difference in character, and with Popo finishing the task, tells them to step aside while he begins his work. A magical blast from Kami rejuvenates the Shenron statue, and the dragon's energy emerges, descending toward Earth. Kami explains that he's returning to the Dragon Balls, and unlike the usual year of dormancy, a wish can be granted immediately. Goku is eager to reunite with everyone, but Kami reminds him that he promised to stay behind and train. He says that after three years of perseverance, Goku can see his friends at the next Tenkaichi Budokai, as Piccolo will be there too, looking to take his life. Shocked, Goku questions Piccolo's resurrection, prompting Kami to reveal that Piccolo, having left behind an offspring, is alive and growing stronger, seeking revenge on Goku. Only Goku can confront this threat, as neither Kami nor Mr. Popo can engage him in battle, and Kami instructs Goku to kill Piccolo once and for all after his three years of training has ended. Goku expresses a desire to start training immediately, but excuses himself to use the restroom first, prompting a comedic fall from Kami and Mr. Popo. As Goku departs, Popo questions Kami about the consequence of Piccolo's defeat, as they used to be the same being, meaning if Piccolo dies, Kami will die as well. Kami acknowledges the inevitability of his demise, viewing it as his duty, and takes responsibility for Piccolo's rampage in the first place. He reveals that he's awaited someone like Goku, and sees potential in him to succeed. Meanwhile at Kame House, the Dragon Balls are gathered, and Shenron appears in his majestic form. Bulma and the others are surprised at the dragon's resurrection, learning that Goku asked Kami to revive him, and is training at the sanctuary for the next Tenkaichi Budokai. Already aware of the group's wish, Shenron grants it, and Krillin, Master Roshi, Chaozu, Nam, and Giren are revived. The Dragon Balls disperse, and the news about Piccolo's defeat spreads among the newly revived, as they wonder about Goku's whereabouts. Yamcha reveals that Shenron said something about Goku being trained at the sanctuary, surprising Master Roshi, who notes that this could only mean that Goku's trainer is none other than God. This news shocks everyone, and Master Roshi notes how amazing Son Goku is, and how in terms of strength, he's far inferior to him. Yamcha speculates on Goku's increasing strength, while Tien expresses eagerness to train and defeat Goku at the next Budokai. Meanwhile, Goku meditates at the sanctuary, discontent with the stillness. Kami emphasizes the need to first train his spirit, and on Earth, Tien, Yamcha, and Krillin intensively train, anticipating their reunion with Goku. Three years come and go, and outside of the Tenkaichi Budokai grounds, rain pours as Master Roshi and Launch stand under an umbrella, awaiting the arrival of the others. A taxi pulls up, and Bulma, Oolong, and Poir emerge. Bulma greets Master Roshi and Launch, and Roshi admires Bulma's transformation over the years, prompting an elbow to the face for his inappropriate touching. Inquiring about Yamcha's absence, Master Roshi learns that he left West City for solitary training. Roshi then states that Krillin followed suit, 
influenced by Goku's absence. Suddenly, a familiar voice greets the group, though they don't recognize the individual. The man then says he's happy to see everyone looking healthy and inquires about the whereabouts of Krillin, Tien, and Yamcha. This inquiry then prompts surprise from everyone as they realize it's Goku all grown up. Removing his turban after the rain stops, Goku is excited to reunite, noting his perception may be affected by the headgear. Goku wonders if everyone shrank, but stunned, they tell him he's gotten taller. Goku then teases Bulma about her red lips, mistaking her lipstick for being sick. Suddenly, four more fighters join. Yamcha, with long hair and scars, Krillin, taller but not as imposing as Yamcha or Tien, and Tien and Shoutsu in their familiar outfits with new symbols. The group reacts with a mixture of surprise and awe, and Yamcha says he hoped for more of a reaction, but Krillin says it's probably due to their major changes. Goku then confronts Krillin, telling him he looks great, and a long silence falls between everyone in the group. Krillin wonders if this is really Goku, and when his friend confirms, the two share a heartfelt moment as the others express their astonishment at Goku's change in appearance. As time passes, a megaphone announces participants to head to the competition hall as elimination rounds will begin soon. Goku inquires about Master Roshi providing them with Gi this time around, but he declines, stating they're all walking their own paths and will have no need to wear his uniform anymore. The group prepare to leave, and Tien privately questions Master Roshi if he plans to compete this time. Roshi, however, declines, realizing he doesn't stand a chance against his former students anymore, as Bulma admires how good Goku looks, stating he's become quite a man. Inside, Krillin, Yamcha, and Goku don outfits similar to Master Roshi's, each having thought alike before the tournament. Yamcha then points out Goku's missing tail, and Goku explains that Kami removed it, mentioning something in the past about wanting to put the moon back together, and that Goku's tail was getting in the way of that. Suddenly, Goku senses something, and everyone wonders. He then spots a green guy with pointy ears, a turban, and a mantle, staring menacingly at him. Yamcha and Krillin are oblivious to this figure, but Tien knows the face all too well. Goku privately acknowledges Piccolo's offspring, now grown to adult size. Piccolo and Goku exchange smirks before he walks away with a cold demeanor. Tien then inquires if one of Demon King Piccolo's family members survived, and Goku tells him that's one way of explaining it, but urges Tien to keep it quiet to avoid causing a panic. Yamcha, Krillin, and Chaozu are curious as to who that person was, but Goku explains that he and Tien were just acknowledging the guy's strength. Soon after, a girl taps Goku on the shoulder, recognizing him as Son Goku. This surprises everyone, but Goku questions her identity, leading her to yell at him viciously and storm off in irritation. Krillin, curious about who the girl was, receives no answer from Goku, prompting Krillin's jealousy as he's still looking for a girlfriend. The tournament official then announces the start of the preliminaries with only 72 contestants, much fewer than before due to the high levels of power in last year's Tenkaichi Buddha. Kai. The drawing for preliminary blocks begins, and Tien instructs Chaozu to scatter the group's numbers, including Piccolo's, so they can see what he's made of. Goku draws number two, placing him in block one's first match. He notices how all of his friends were scattered across blocks, and states they won't meet until the finals. The preliminary matches to determine the eight finalists commence, prompting everyone to head to their respective blocks. At block one, the official goes over the rules of the tournament, and instructs number one and number Number two to take the contestant platform. Krillin expresses excitement about witnessing Kami's training, and Tien and Yamcha notice Goku's match and decide to join Krillin in watching. In the ring, Goku faces King Choppa again, who declares he won't be defeated like he was in the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai. The match is called to begin, but Goku remains unmoving irritating Choppa. Yamcha notes Goku's absence of ki, while Tien remarks that Goku has completely cleared his mind, making victory impossible for Choppa. Choppa charges at Goku to kick him, but Goku vanishes. Goku appears behind Choppa, and Choppa, thinking Goku might be in the air, is surprised when Goku delivers a slight tap to the back of his neck knocking him out. Goku is declared the winner, and impressing the spectators, Yamcha notes Goku didn't use any of his strength, while Piccolo watches as well, confident that nobody stands a chance of defeating him, and vows to pulverize Goku in front of everyone. Soon after, Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien also win their matches. However, Chaozu faces defeat 
battered by an unknown opponent. Tien notices something amiss and rushes toward Chaozu, who appears to be dead. However, the man who defeated him notes he has just enough life in him left to survive, as he didn't want to be disqualified. Tien looks up at the opponent and is surprised as both he and Goku recognize him as Mercenary Tao. Goku can't believe this, and Tien notes that Mercenary Tao is supposed to be dead. Tao, however, claims he doesn't die easily, revealing that he was in bad shape and had to be healed, though the process took some time. Krillin questions Goku about who this person is, leading Goku to explain that he's Mercenary Tao, an assassin in Master Shin's younger brother, technically making him the mentor of Tien and Shoutsu. Goku believed that he'd killed Tao in the past, but the hitman reveals he used his earnings to be revived as a cyborg, significantly enhancing his power. Tao states he's not interested in winning the tournament, rather his sole objective is to take Son Goku's life. He says Tien will be next, who he perceives as a traitor. Tien clarifies that he hasn't become one of Master Roshi's students, but he realized the ideologies of Master Shen was wrong. A challenge is issued, and Mercenary Tao anticipates the upcoming fight with enthusiasm. Later, Piccolo secures victory in a match by effortlessly flicking his opponent with his finger. Krillin observes the assembly of remarkable participants, acknowledging the high level of talent present. At the same time, Goku reflects on Piccolo's abilities, stating he's much stronger than his father was. Time passes, and Goku easily wins another match, securing his place in the finals along with Tien, Krillin, Yamcha, Piccolo, and even Mercenary Tao. Shortly after, the girl who confronted Goku earlier makes it to the finals as well. The last match to determine the finals is set up, with a masked fat man and a nerdy looking gentleman. The match unfolds, and the nerd charges in with a goofy stance, trips, and inadvertently headbutts the fat dude, knocking him out. The nerd secures his place in the finals, much to everyone's laughter, including Krillin. The announcer prepares for the lottery with the eight finalists, and the masked man walks away Way, revealing himself to be Yajirobe in disguise. As the drawing starts to determine the matchups, the announcer screams in fear when seeing Krillin again. Krillin, however, reassures him that he's not a ghost, but has been revived since the last Budokai. The lottery numbers are drawn, and the announcer creates a chart revealing the eight finalists. Mercenary Tao vs. Tien, Goku vs. The Stranger, Krillin vs. Piccolo aka Junior, and Yamcha vs. The Nerd, now known as Shen. Before the tournament begins, Yamcha, Krillin, and Goku inform Master Roshi, Bulma, and the others that everyone except Chaozu is participating in the competition. Krillin reveals that the one who defeated Chaozu was Master Shen's younger brother, Mercenary Tao, who survived his encounter with Goku and underwent cybernetic enhancements. Yamcha explains that Tao has a vendetta against Goku and Tien, and will be fighting Tien in the first match. Despite concerns raised by Master Roshi, Goku asserts that everything will be fine, as Tien is stronger than Tao. Master Shin then interrupts their conversation, proclaiming the impending demise of the Turtle School Disciples. Master Roshi counters, stating that Tien and the others are forging their own paths and don't strictly adhere to the Turtle style anymore. Shin questions this, considering they're all wearing the outfits of the Turtle School, but Roshi clarifies that they wear them out of respect for him, affirmed by Krillin. Dismissing their exchange, Master Shin departs, expressing skepticism about their chances of victory, and Goku notes that the strongest in the the tournament definitely isn't Mercenary Tao. As the contestants are called to start their matches, Goku, Yamcha, and Krillin receive well wishes from their companions. Master Roshi notes that for once, he'll actually be able to watch the matches, and Oolong expresses difficulty at getting a good view due to the large crowd. In response, Bulma triggers Launch's transformation into her aggressive persona, who clears a path by firing pistols into the air. On their way to the arena, Krillin questions Goku about his confidence in Tien beating Mercenary Tao. Goku explains Tien's superiority, but changes the subject to ask if Krillin or Yamcha would like a sensu bean, which will satisfy their appetite for 10 days. Smiling at one another, Krillin says that they already have some, and Yamcha reveals that Master Roshi informed them about climbing Korin Tower three years ago, where they grabbed some sensu along with Tien and Chaozu and went their separate ways to train. Krillin mentions encountering Yajirobe, who was invited to the Budokai, but but notes he seems to be absent. Goku states he might not like this sort of thing, but watching from afar, Yajirobe privately tells Goku to shut up as he showed up 
but lost. Soon after, the announcer initiates the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, calling Mercenary Tao and Tien for the first match, as Launch shouts encouragement to Tien. The match begins, and the audience, including Yamcha, Goku, Krillin, Master Shen, and Master Roshi, watch intently. Mercenary Tao charges at Tien, who effortlessly evades the attack and counters by striking Tao on the back. Tao falls to the ground, much to the surprise of the onlookers, but rises and notes Tien's gotten better over the years. Tien, noting he already forgave Tao for what he did to Chaozu, tells him to forfeit, but Tao refuses. Tien then swiftly maneuvers, reappearing behind Tao, asserting his newfound strength. Tao expresses irritation at Tien's sudden appearance and the assertion that he's gotten too strong for him to handle. Tien, however, unfazed, remarks that he knew he was stronger as soon as Tao tried to attack him. Despite the mercenary's angry advances, Tien effortlessly evades strike kicks, and eventually catches Tao's fist, shocking Master Shen. Influenced by the teachings of his former master, Tien expresses reluctance in defeating Tao in such a humiliating manner and urges him to withdraw. Tao, however, pulls away, leaving his mechanical fist in Tien's grasp. A sharp blade then emerges from the socket, and Tao slashes Tien across the chest. This leaves a noticeable cut on the fighter, surprising Goku and the others. The announcer protests the foul play, a Asserting that Tien wins the match by default, but Tao disregards the rules, driven solely by his intent to kill Tien. Master Shen then screams out, encouraging his younger brother to eliminate all affiliates of the Turtle School. Tien then discards his slashed shirt, furious as his former master has lost all his pride as a martial artist. Mercenary Tao then removes his other hand, revealing a gun that he plans to use on Tien. Yamcha and Krillin offer to step in to help, but Tien declines any assistance, opting to handle the situation himself. Tao targets Tien, introducing him to his secret weapon, the Super Dodon Pa, capable of killing its opponents in an instant. Tao tells Tien it's pointless to dodge, prompting Tien to yell out in fury for the mercenary to do his worst. Tao then unleashes the Super Dodon Pa, and as the blast hurtles toward Tien, he stands still, much to the surprise of the others. In response, Tien emits a resounding cry, nullifying the blast completely. Tao can't believe what he's seeing, and Tien rushes forward, delivering a punch to Tao's stomach rendering him unconscious. Tien carries the mercenary to Master Shen and tells him he'll likely stay unconscious for several days. Requesting them to leave, Tien tells the two to never show their faces around them again, and Master Shen departs with Tao on his shoulders. As Tien walks backstage, Goku praises his efforts, and both Yamcha and Krillin note that Tien is becoming a more formidable opponent. The second match is announced, and the announcer calls out Goku and the strange woman who refused to give her real name. Goku enters the ring and seeks an explanation for the girl's anger, but she blames it on him. Goku questions the girl, asking if she might be confusing him with someone else. However, she confidently asserts that he is indeed who she's looking for. The spectators ponder her identity, while the announcer signals the start of the match. The girl initiates with kicks and strikes aimed at Goku, who skillfully evades her attacks. Perplexed, Goku inquires if they've met before, prompting the girl to confirm their previous encounter. She continues her assault while expressing frustration about Goku not understanding a girl's emotions and being kept waiting for so many years. Claiming that Goku has forgotten a promise, the girl launches into the air, delivering kicks that Goku narrowly dodges. Observing her movements, Master Roshi notes similarities to the Turtle Hermit style. Goku and the girl both descend back to the ring, and Goku, still puzzled, questions the nature of the forgotten promise. The girl then reveals that it was a promise to take her as his wife, surprising in Krillin, Yamcha, Master Roshi, and the others. Goku, unaware of the concept of marriage, consults Krillin for an explanation, prompting a comedic fall from everyone. Krillin and Yamcha react humorously, with Krillin wondering when Goku managed to get engaged to such a cute girl. Yamcha then clarifies the meaning of marriage, emphasizing spending the rest of his life with her. Goku wonders when he promised such a thing, and questions the girl on her name, but she says she won't give it to him unless he defeats her. Determined to 
fulfill such an easy task, Goku prepares himself, although the girl claims she won't be so easily defeated. On the sidelines, Oolong, aware of the girl's identity, taunts Bulma and mentions that they were present during Goku's first meeting with her. Goku, ready for the match, throws a punch that creates a shockwave, sending the girl out of the ring. This development surprises everyone, and Goku says he might have overdone it a little. The announcer then declares Goku the winner of the match, although nobody actually saw what happened. Master Roshi then explains to himself, thinking that the girl was simply thrown out of the ring by the wind of Goku's blow. Goku encourages the girl to stand up, and Piccolo, watching from above, recognizes Goku's technique as similar to the Demon Clan's. The girl, now rising, says she chose well to pick Goku as her husband, and announces herself as Chi Chi the Ox King's daughter. This prompts shocked reactions from Goku, Yamcha, Master Roshi, Bulma, and Puar. Goku recalls their conversation at the Ox King's castle and finally remembers, realizing he misunderstood the term wife to be some kind of food. Despite the revelation though, Goku agrees to marry Chi Chi, who excitedly grabs his arm and walks backstage with him. The crowd cheers, all except Goku's friends, who stand in disbelief. Backstage, Goku advises Krillin to be cautious as he faces Piccolo in the next match, and warns him to go all out from the start. The announcer then calls on Krillin and Junior, who meet each other in the ring and exchange insults. Piccolo belittles Krillin and goads him to make the first move, prompting Krillin to acknowledge the insult and vow not to hold back. Anticipating the upcoming exchange, Krillin readies his fists and lowers them to his waist as a silence falls on the arena. Krillin then thrusts them forward, releasing a blast from each hand aimed at Piccolo. Evading the blast and ascending, Piccolo finds the projectiles persistently following him, prompting him to neutralize them with eye beams. Unexpectedly, Krillin leaps into the air and delivers a punch to Piccolo's face, propelling him into the distance. Halting himself mid-air, Piccolo notes that Krillin isn't as weak as he looks as he descends back into the ring. Krillin charges toward Piccolo, who skillfully sidesteps the attack. Undeterred, Krillin jumps sideways, launching a series of punches at Piccolo. Despite Piccolo's successful blocks, Krillin persists, prompting Piccolo to ascend once again. Following suit, Krillin jumps after him, only to be kicked down toward the ring's perimeter. Goku and the others believe the match to be over, but in a surprising twist, Krillin halts himself mid-air, revealing his newfound mastery of flying, much to the realization of Master Roshi, Tien, and Goku. Krillin lands back in the ring, and impressed, Piccolo states that Krillin's movements and endurance aren't to be underestimated. As a show of good faith, Piccolo decides to unveil a glimpse of his true power. Bulma encourages Krillin, dismissing Piccolo's display as a bluff and urges him to defeat the adversary. However, Goku issues a word of caution, acknowledging the validity of Piccolo's statements. Piccolo questions if Krillin is prepared, but Krillin tells him to hurry up, as he wouldn't have waited even if he wasn't. Reassuring him, Piccolo declares that he has no intention of killing Krillin, but thinks to himself that he will, eventually, in addition to Goku and the rest of his friends. The arena falls silent, and in a swift motion, Piccolo pulls back his arm and extends it across the ring, seizing Krillin's leg. This move shocks the others, and effortlessly retracting his arm, Piccolo yanks Krillin back and delivers a powerful punch, sending him hurtling towards the rear wall. Undeterred, Krillin rebounds off the wall and charges at Piccolo with a punch. However, Piccolo evades the attack, responding by kicking Krillin high into the air. In pursuit, Piccolo ascends after Krillin, who recognizes that this is his final opportunity to win the battle. Initiating the Kamehameha technique, Krillin starts the chant, but Piccolo swiftly appears behind him. Krillin abruptly turns around and releases the energy blast with a resounding cry, and although the attack connects, Krillin realizes that Piccolo utilized the after image technique to avoid it. Goku urgently warns Krillin to look behind him, and the real Piccolo bids Krillin a farewell, as he forcefully smashes the fighter down to toward the ring before he can react. Forcefully, Krillin collides with the ring's surface, lying motionless, surprising the onlookers. Landing beside him, Piccolo assumes he's killed Krillin with just an ounce of his true power and says he'll be disqualified. However, Krillin slowly rises to his feet, much to Piccolo's astonishment. The warrior ultimately collapses though, stating he can't fight anymore and gives up. The announcer declares Piccolo the victor, acknowledging Krillin's incredible and memorable 
memorable performance. Goku assists Krillin off the stage as he's met with cheers from the enthusiastic crowd. Master Roshi notes that Krillin has indeed become a great martial artist and Piccolo thinks to himself that the world may not be so easy to conquer after all. The announcement for the fourth match is made and Shen nervously approaches the ring. Krillin comments to Yamcha that he's lucky and Yamcha confidently makes his way to the ring anticipating a swift victory. Shen tells Yamcha that he hopes they'll have a fair fight and Yamcha playfully agrees. Observing from the audience, Yajirobe, noting both fighters in the arena, says that Yamcha is destined for a pitiful loss. Goku also senses something peculiar about Shen, much to the confusion of Krillin. With the announcer commencing the fourth match, Yamcha, not taking things seriously, encourages Shen to make the first move. In a blend of nervousness and jolliness, Shen flails his arms and charges at Yamcha in a comical manner. Yamcha easily avoids his swipe, but Shen stumbles and inadvertently kicks Yamcha in the stomach. Having felt the brunt of the attack, Yamcha lets out a yell, prompting laughter from the audience as Shen rises to his feet. Yamcha laughing nervously brushes off the accident while Shen expresses regret. Growing irritated though, Yamcha decides to end the match quickly. Yamcha, reverting from a serious demeanor, declares his intention to attack, urging Shen to prepare himself. Shen then assumes a goofy stance, prompting Yamcha to plan a swift knockout. However, as Yamcha lunges with a kick, Shen deftly ducks in what appears to be fear, causing Yamcha to collide with the back of Shen's head, hitting his sensitive area. As Yamcha falls to the ground in pain, the audience erupts in laughter, and Bulma is visibly embarrassed. Infuriated, Yamcha gets pity applause from the audience, and Shen nervously apologizes. Yamcha lies and states he didn't feel a thing, and Shin, claiming victory either way, deems the outcome unsatisfactory. This catches Yamcha's attention as he questions Shin's confidence in defeating him, and Shin asserts his belief. Determined to get serious, Yamcha warns Shin, who tells the fighter to give it his best. The two prepare to engage, and in an unexpected twist, Shin quickly delivers an elbow strike to Yamcha, sending him crashing to the arena floor. This development shocks everyone, including Goku, as Yamcha rises to his feet, wondering what just happened. Shen proceeds to lecture Yamcha, stating he made assumptions about his strength based on his outward appearance, and because of that, he failed to examine his inner power and see how strong he truly was. Yamcha stands in disbelief, his mouth bloodied, and Yajirobe, recognizing Shen's extraordinary abilities, isn't surprised. The crowd's demeanor has changed from laughter to silence, and Yamcha, shocked by Shen's skills, shifts to a serious demeanor and vows to win no matter what. Shen asserts he can't let that happen, and as Yamcha charges at him, his punches are blocked repeatedly, and his feet are kicked backward as he drops to the ground. Yamcha attempts to kick at Shen, but Shen skillfully blocks it and counters with a punch to Yamcha's face. Krillin wonders what's going on, and Bulma yells for Yamcha to finish the match. However, Master Roshi states it won't be that easy, and acknowledges the strength of Yamcha's formidable opponent. Undeterred, Yamcha launches another kick at Shen, who effortlessly dodges it and reappears behind Yamcha, delivering a powerful kick to his back. Shen, criticizing Yamcha's impractical jumping, emphasizes the difficulty it poses in avoiding attacks. Goku, observing the fight, wonders about the mysterious nature of this opponent. Yamcha rises to his feet, angered that Shen is treating him like a child, but Shen informs Yamcha that he's simply much stronger than him and says that achieving his level would require extensive training. Shen then cryptically mentions that he's not human, and in response, Months, Yamcha questions if Shen is an alien. Shen clarifies that his current form is merely a borrowed body, not his true identity prompting Goku to contemplate what this could mean. Determined to step up his game, Yamcha decides to unveil a new technique. Extending his right hand with curved fingers and the palm facing up, Yamcha thanks Shen for the advice, but declares that he won't lose. Focusing his energy to a greater extent, Yamcha generates a sizable key ball. Readying himself to attack, he launches what he declares the spirit ball at Shen, but it misses initially. Undeterred, Yamcha demonstrates control over the energy sphere, guiding it back towards Shen. Shen, however, adeptly dodges, causing the spirit ball to crash through the ring. Yamcha acknowledges Shen's speed, but maneuvers the energy ball back up, successfully hitting Shen in the face and knocking off his glasses. This move surprises the onlookers as Yamcha revels in his presumed victory. Unexpectedly though, Shen recovers and swiftly advances toward Yamcha, delivering a powerful strike to the fighter's chest. Yamcha staggers backward and eventually tumbles out of the ring, much to the surprise of Goku 
and the others. As Shin is declared the winner of the match, Yamcha climbs back into the ring disappointed, and suddenly, Goku has a realization. He realizes that the name Shin closely resembles Shenron, and given the only person he knows to have created Shenron is God, Goku correctly deduces that Shin is Kami in disguise. Yamcha and Shin then head backstage, where Yamcha inquires about who he really is. Shin, however, opts to remain tight-lipped until the tournament's end. Before leaving though, he turns to Goku, winking in acknowledgement. The top four contenders, Tien, Son Goku, Piccolo, and Shin have advanced to the semifinals. In the first semifinal showdown, Tien, the victor from the previous Tenkaichi Budokai, faces Goku. After a brief exchange, Goku questions if Tien will go all out from the start, and the fighter agrees. With a stylish flip, they both enter the arena, locking eyes with determination. Tien challenges Goku to reveal the results of his divine training, and the announcer signals the commencement of the match. As the two engage, Goku skillfully counters Tien's attack, blocking an elbow with his knee. Tien attempts several strikes, but Goku evades with back flips and aerial maneuvers. A blast from Tien is deflected by Goku, leading to an intense mid-air confrontation. The two continue to exchange blows in the air, and descending to roof level, they break apart and propel themselves off the ground continuing their battle at a blistering pace, too swift for most spectators to follow. However, Piccolo, Krillin, and Yamcha manage to keep up with the rapid exchanges. Returning to view, Goku and Tien clash, intertwining their hands in a test of strength. Goku gains the upper hand by leaning back and propelling Tien into the air. Rapidly ascending, Tien manages to bring himself back down to the arena and charges at Goku, who evades the attack. Pursuing Goku, Tien lands behind him and attempts an attack to the back of the head but is met with the realization of Goku's after image, much to his surprise. Goku points out that Tien fell for such an old trick, and seemingly out of breath, Tien smiles, as does Goku. Piccolo watches from afar, and although the announcer considers both Goku and Tien to be evenly matched, Master Roshi observes that after everything so far, Goku isn't even tired. Tien acknowledges Goku's impressive progress, stating that he's even better now than he was three years ago. However, he asserts that Goku will never be able to win, as there's one thing he hasn't improved on over the years, his speed. Closing in on Goku, Tien suddenly disappears, prompting Goku to vanish as well. The skirmish elevates into the air, with Goku vigorously kicking at Tien. Returning to view, Tien admires Goku's sight and challenges him to cope when his vision fails. Taking a superior position above Goku, Tien elbows him toward the ring. Goku lands safely and executes a few front flips to strike at what's revealed to be an afterimage with an elbow attack. Ready to resume, Tien reappears and kicks Goku away from the ring. However, Goku swiftly spins back like a tornado and lands, praising Tien's speed. Tien asserts his confidence in winning due to his speed, prompting Goku to request a minute to change his clothes. Goku removes his top, shreds his undershirt, and drops it with a hefty thud, much to Tien's surprise. Upon moving himself to examine Goku's clothing, Tien is astounded as it's extremely heavy. When questioned if Goku was fighting with this weight on, Goku confirms, stating it was a part of Kami's training. Tien then realizes the weight extends to Goku's wristbands and boots as well which the fighter also removed. Krillin and Yamcha assist Goku by carrying his heavy gear backstage, expressing shock at their weight, as Goku notes each piece is 50 pounds. Tien calculates the combined weight to be at least 250 pounds, causing a stir amongst the announcer and audience. Goku, now feeling much lighter, is ready to resume, and Tien, relishing the challenge, exclaims things are getting more interesting. Tien charges at Goku, who disappears, reappearing as Tien and targets him with an elbow. Goku successfully blocks the attack, leading Tien to believe Goku's speed is unimpressive. However, Goku reveals he has Tien's belt, causing the fighter's pants to fall down. Tien gazes down in disbelief as Goku holds his belt, and even Piccolo, observing from the roof, acknowledges Goku's speed. While Tien admits that Goku moves so swiftly that even his own eyes couldn't track him, he asserts that the match isn't over yet. Tien proceeds to reveal a formidable technique, a sure to win move, but before explaining further, Goku returns his belt as Tien hastily pulls up his pants. Goku inquires if the technique is the tri-beam again, and Tien expresses the danger of the tri-
I-beam for both of them and introduces an alternate technique that requires less power but is absolutely unavoidable. He explains that his three eyes are insufficient to perceive Goku's movements, but with 12 eyes, nothing can escape his sight. Shocked, Goku questions the concept of 12 eyes and Tien folds his arms, declaring victory for himself. Suddenly, Tien splits into two and those two split again, resulting in a total of four Tien. Shocked, Goku clarifies that this isn't an after image as all four are real entities. Each of the four declares this technique as multi-form and immediately charges in, taking each corner of the ring. Goku ponders his next move as all Tien simultaneously unleash blasts towards him. With no other choice, Goku leaps into the air, prompting the Tiens to notice and shoot eye blasts at him, all of which connect head on. Mid-air, Goku is left visibly stunned, eliciting shock from the onlookers. Descending back to the ring, Goku lands, meeting a confident Tien who tells him to give up. Despite the barrage, Goku refuses to yield, stating he won't be hit again anyway. On the sidelines, Master Roshi notes that Goku's not even tired and believes his stamina makes him a formidable opponent. At the same time, Tien believes Goku to be bluffing, prompting the fighter to claim to have discovered two weaknesses in Tien's attack. This surprises Tien, and watching from above, Piccolo confidently asserts that Son Goku Will win. Skeptical of Goku's claims, Tien asserts that his next attack will secure victory. The four Tien's position themselves in separate corners once more, unleashing a barrage of blasts towards Goku in unison. Once again, Goku effortlessly leaps over the projectiles, prompting a Tien to declare that escaping their 12 eyes is impossible. However, before the Tien's can utilize their eye beams once more, Goku employs the solar flare, leaving everyone blinded except for the sunglasses wearing a announcer and Master Roshi. Descending back to the ring, Goku points out the first weakness of the Tien's, their reliance on their superior eyesight. As the Tien's attempt to attack Goku blinded, Goku explains that their ability to perceive an opponent's movements with their eyesight alone becomes a vulnerability when deprived of their eyes. While one Tien argues that Goku faces the same limitation, Goku playfully disagrees, revealing that he can anticipate an attack without relying on his eyes, a skill acquired during his training with Kami and Mr. Popo. With Tien's vision returning, Goku states he'll need to end the match, prompting a Tien to boast that Goku won't beat the four of them single-handedly. Goku, however, proceeds to expose the second weakness in Tien's technique, criticizing the decision to divide into four individuals. Charging at each Tien, he strikes them successively, sending all four flying out of the ring. Goku explains that by dividing into four, their attacks, defense, and speed are all reduced to a quarter of their original power. Tien notes Goku's impressive perception of his technique, while Master Roshi, Yamcha, and Krillin sit in awe at the fighter's progression. And with that, the announcer confidently declares Goku's advancement to the finals. Chi Chi praises Goku upon his return backstage, and Tien confides in Yamcha and Krillin, who thought he stood a chance, asserting that Goku had yet to unleash his true power. As Tien ponders on his inability to have pushed Goku to even use the Kamehameha, Krillin wonders just how much power Goku is really holding back. Observing from a distance, Piccolo acknowledges Goku as a worthy opponent indeed. Meanwhile, the announcer calls upon Piccolo and Shin to determine Goku's final opponent. In the backstage area, Shin readies himself to step into the ring, and Goku requests Chi Chi to wait outside for a moment. In a private conversation, Goku refers to Shin as Kami, and Shin reveals to Goku that he's borrowing a human body. Goku questions why Shin is here to kill Piccolo, and Shin states that it's because Goku can't. Goku questions questions this, but having been reminded about his awareness of Shen's connection to Piccolo through Mr. Popo, Goku remains silent. Shen is frustrated by Mr. Popo revealing too much, but states once more that the death of Piccolo means the death of Kami as well. Shen goes on to state that Goku's knowledge of this fact will prevent him from doing the right thing. Goku suggests finding an alternative to killing, but Shen insists that there's no other option as he desires to eliminate the seed of Demon King Piccolo that he sowed. 
inside the ring, the match is ready to begin, and the delay prompts curiosity among the onlookers. Krillin notices Goku and Shen engaged in conversation, and Shen informs Goku that he believes he's the only one who can defeat Piccolo, as he left most of Goku's training under Mr. Popo and doesn't have much of a grasp of his true power. Goku questions if Shen plans to die, but he cryptically states that Goku shouldn't worry, as he picked up a few things while living amongst humans. With this, Shen heads to the ring, informing Piccolo that he was in the bathroom. Krillin queries Goku about his discussion with Shen, and Goku says he'll tell him after everything's over. As the announcer signals the start of the match, Piccolo clarifies to Shen that Goku is his true target, and says he'll end things quickly. Shen questions if Piccolo intends to eliminate Goku to reclaim world domination, and Piccolo is puzzled about how Shen knows this. Unwilling to let him achieve his goal, Shen generates a massive shockwave, sending Piccolo airborne. Piccolo halts himself mid-air, and Shen ascends to confront him. Piccolo fires a blast at Shen, questioning his identity, but Shen manages to dodge, causing the blast to crash into the ocean. Suddenly, Piccolo knocks Shen back down toward the rain. Upon landing, Shen finds Piccolo behind him, but when Piccolo attacks, Shen vanishes. Shen reappears above Piccolo, smashing him down into the arena floor. However, Piccolo emerges on the opposite side of the ring, and the two adversaries lock eyes, leaving Krillin puzzled about their mysterious maneuvers. Contemplating the borrowed human form, Shen privately reflects on its apparent weakness. Piccolo, having read his mind, vocalizes the idea of borrowing a human body, prompting Shen to reveal in a strange language that Piccolo possesses telepathic abilities. This shocks Piccolo, and responding in the same language, Piccolo claims to have unraveled Shen's true identity. Now realizing his adversary is calming, Piccolo demands to know why he's come to the tournament. Shen then states that there's no use in explaining, as Piccolo already knows. Amused, Piccolo scoffs at the notion of Shen defeating him, emphasizing their intertwined fates, where one's demise leads to the others. Unconcerned, Shen expresses his willingness to accept such an outcome, noting that Piccolo would be too afraid to kill him anyway. Piccolo, fearful at the idea of Shen committing suicide, is assured by Shen that there's no cause for concern, as he's found a way around this inconvenience. Shen then pulls out a small bottle from his shirt pocket and places it on the ground, as the announcer wonders what's going on. Piccolo panics, realizing the bottle's potential to seal him away, and Shen declares the initiation of the evil containment wave. This revelation surprises everyone but Goku, as waves of magic swirl toward Piccolo. However, rather than succumbing to the technique, he smirks and proclaims the reverse evil containment wave. The magical force reverses its course, now targeting Shen, much to the shock of Master Roshi. As Shen, powerless to move, is watched by Goku and the others, he expresses his surprise to see that Piccolo managed to counter such a technique and vows to return his borrowed body before it's too late. Kami then emerges from the borrowed human body, urging Goku not to worry about his demise and to rid the world of Piccolo. Following Piccolo's guidance, Kami is directed into the small bottle, and Piccolo seals the top. With a triumphant smirk, Piccolo holds the bottle as the onlookers react in shock, asserting that with Kami now sealed away, he has no weaknesses. Piccolo revels in sealing away Kami, and the announcer begins a countdown on the fallen Shen, who's left lying face first after Kami's departure from his human body. The count reaches 10, declaring Piccolo the winner with his mysterious technique, securing his spot in the finals. Goku, astonished by the fact that Kami is trapped in the bottle, privately voices his disbelief as the announcer tends to the incapacitated individual. Individual. Applause ensues as the nerd, having regained consciousness, rejoins the audience, questioning if he had just participated in the Tenkaichi Budokai. His child admires his strength, much to his confusion, and the announcer announces a 10 minute break before the grand finals. As Piccolo makes his way backstage, Goku urges him to hand over the bottle, but Piccolo refuses and instead swallows it, claiming Goku would have to kill him to retrieve it. However, killing Piccolo would result in Kami's 
Tony's demise as well. Piccolo walks away, laughing at his advantageous position, and Master Roshi appears, questioning the situation. Tien wonders what's going on as well, expressing disbelief that Piccolo could just be an ordinary member of the Demon Clan. Goku then answers their questions, stating that the identity of this individual is the Demon King Piccolo. Shocked, Tien states that Goku killed Piccolo three years ago, but Goku recounts Kami's explanation about Piccolo being born from an egg just before Demon King Piccolo's death and states that this Piccolo and the Demon King Piccolo are one and the same. Goku then says that from what he can tell, this reincarnation is even stronger than his predecessor. Yamcha and Tien recall seeing Piccolo emerge from Shen's body during the evil containment wave, and Goku clarifies that it wasn't Piccolo, but Kami, having temporarily borrowed a human body to confront Piccolo. Goku further explains the shared history of Kami and Piccolo as once being one person, with the evil expelled from Kami having Having transformed into Demon King Piccolo long ago. Therefore, killing one will lead to the demise of the other. With Goku seemingly the last resort against Piccolo's might, the group ponder their next move, assuming that Piccolo must have shown up to the tournament for the sole purpose of killing Goku. Piccolo interrupts their conversation and confirms, asserting that Goku is the real reason he's here, and states that in truth, he hates him even more than Kami. Piccolo warns Goku that this time he won't be holding back as he's improved dramatically since their last battle, and Goku notes the same for himself. Piccolo talks confidently about his impending victory and the vision of his new demon world and walks away laughing. The announcer calls Piccolo and Goku for the finals, and Piccolo threatens Goku on the way to the ring, stating that he wouldn't bother telling his friends goodbye as he'll reunite them soon enough. Krillin questions Goku on if he can defeat Piccolo, but Goku asserts that he doesn't know how this battle will end. Moving his way into the ring, the announcer begins begins the commencement of the finals with excitement, but knowing the truth of the stakes, Krillin expresses concern. As the combatants stare each other down, Piccolo challenges Goku to prepare for his death as he removes his mantle. The announcer declares the commencement of the finals of the Tenkaichi Budokai, and Goku and Piccolo charge toward one another. The explosive final round begins as Goku and Piccolo skillfully block each other's strikes. In a swift move, Piccolo delivers a powerful headbutt, sending Goku flying across the ring. Despite the force of the impact, Goku manages to land on his feet. Piccolo, seizing the opportunity, flies over to attack from behind, but Goku counters with a well-placed kick causing them to disengage momentarily. As the battle continues, Piccolo extends his arm, only for Goku to catch it and toss him into the air. Piccolo attempts to slow himself down mid-air, but Goku skillfully unleashes a shockwave attack, pushing Piccolo backward. Goku leaps over him, and Piccolo cunningly clenches his fist. Suddenly stopping himself, Piccolo fires a blast downward, hitting Goku with a devastating attack head on. This sends Goku plummeting toward the ring, and Piccolo quickly follows suit, shooting another blast with his other hand and unleashing a barrage that connects as Goku collides with the ring. The impact leaves a substantial hole in the ring, with Goku lying at its center. The announcer begins the countdown, but Piccolo demands him to stop, claiming that son Goku is faking his injuries. To everyone's surprise, Goku effortlessly rises, relatively unharmed. Noticing the state of his tattered clothes, Goku discards the remnants of his shirt, as Piccolo states that he knows Goku is trying to conceal his true power. Power. He says he has many more techniques in store, however, and Goku, noting Piccolo as a horrible monster, says he can't help but get excited at seeing his strength. Determined to escalate the intensity, both Goku and Piccolo decide to unleash their full power and charge at each other once more. Engaging in a rapid exchange of blows, Piccolo and Goku clash multiple times before locking hands in a test of strength. Piccolo attempts to utilize his eye beams, but Goku skillfully ducks and retaliates by swinging his feet up, delivering a powerful kick to Piccolo's face and pushes him back. Seizing an opportunity, Goku disappears, leaving Piccolo waiting as the crowd and everyone else fall silent. Piccolo then suddenly screams aloud, delivering an elbow to the reappeared Goku as he crashes to the tournament's wall nearby. The impact causes the wall to shatter, surprising Krillin and the others standing nearby. Despite the rubble, Goku is nowhere to be seen, but he emerges behind Piccolo and kicks him across the ring much to everyone's surprise. Piccolo ascends into the air, furious, and announces his intent to obliterate the entire arena. Realizing the implications of such a ferocious attack, Goku urges everyone to get away, but notices there's little time to react 
as he leaps into the air. Goku catches Piccolo's attention, who fires the attack at him immediately, ridiculing him for putting his life at risk for the humans. The blast hurtles at Goku as he raises his hand to deflect it, grazing him slightly as it shoots far away from the tournament grounds. The shockwave surprises the onlookers as they witness a colossal explosion in the distance. Frustrated that Goku was only grazed, Piccolo watches as the fighter propels himself back into the ring. Noting that Piccolo is still the cowardly, angry being he used to be, Goku declares his counterattack, the Super Kamehameha. Goku begins to chant for the attack, but Master Roshi interrupts, urging him to wait as killing Piccolo would result in the death of Kami. Frustrated and uncertain, Goku stops, grappling with the dilemma. Laughing, Piccolo states that Goku's emotions are his biggest weakness as he's too afraid to attack him at full power due to Kami's imminent death. However, Piccolo says he has no such fear and announces his intent to slaughter everyone in the arena in the blink of an eye. As the fighter begins to charge his energy, Goku calls him a coward and says he'll hurt innocent people, but Piccolo confidently asserts he doesn't care. As Piccolo prepares for his devastating attack, everyone begins to panic. However, Krillin intervenes, shouting to Goku that even if Kami dies, they can use the Dragon Balls to revive him, allowing Goku to proceed with the Super Kamehameha. As Goku prepares his attack, thanking Krillin, Piccolo retorts that Shinron died three years ago, dismissing the idea as he unleashes his devastating blast. Undeterred, Goku counters that Shinron was indeed revived, and with a resolute cry, he unleashes the powerful Super Kamehameha. The beams collide with a forceful impact, but Goku's energy wave overwhelms Piccolo's massive blast as he's caught in the explosion. Despite shielding himself, Piccolo takes a direct hit as the tournament grounds and the onlookers are all affected by the aftermath of the attack. When the smoke clears, Goku looks up to notice Piccolo still alive, but visibly battered with torn clothes and seething rage. Descending back to the ring, Piccolo impressively withstood Goku's Super Kamehameha. Having had a taste of true fear, Piccolo grows angrier, asserting that he can never forgive Goku and will beat him within an inch of his life. As the announcer notes the amazing course of events taking place, he suddenly pauses in confusion as he and the crowd notice this fighter looks oddly familiar without his cape and turban. Launch points out the resemblance to Demon King Piccolo, and the sentiment is echoed by the rest of the onlookers. In that moment, Piccolo himself declares that it's only natural he resemble him, as he's the reincarnation of the great demon king Piccolo. This revelation shocks the crowd as Piccolo elaborates on his intention to conquer the world once Goku is killed. This prompts a mass exodus of the audience as they all scream in fear, recounting the events of the previous demon king's rule. In an instant, everyone is gone, leaving the arena completely empty aside from Oolong, Launch, Boma, Poir and the announcer, who continues to observe and narrate. Goku instructs Krillin and the others to move away as things are about to get dangerous, and they exit through the back wall arena into the remnants of the audience. Piccolo notes how quiet it is since everyone's gone, and Goku, resolute, tells Piccolo that he won't allow him to take over the world. Confident that Goku won't be able to stop him after his next technique though, Piccolo begins to power up. Suddenly, he undergoes a startling transformation, growing to a gigantic size. This technique surprises the remaining onlookers as Piccolo asserts that Goku's death is quickly approaching. With a powerful punch and subsequent stomp, Piccolo attempts to strike Goku, who narrowly evades both. Goku positions himself at Piccolo's eye level, prompting Piccolo to swat him down to the ring with a forceful impact. As Goku lies on the ground in pain, Tien offers assistance, but Goku declines, recognizing that if he accepts help from his friend, he'll be disqualified from the tournament. Piccolo points out Goku's foolishness in denying assistance, as Master Roshi notes that even with Piccolo's size, he's just as fast as he was before. Undeterred by Piccolo's increased size, Goku remains unfazed and Piccolo retaliates with a mouth blast directed at Goku. The blast triggers an explosion, but Goku skillfully 
dodge is by darting through Piccolo's legs. Leaping up, Goku delivers a swift kick to the back of Piccolo's leg, causing him to lose balance. As Piccolo lands on the arena floor, Goku seizes the opportunity as he grabs one of Piccolo's fingers and uses his strength to hurl the giant adversary overhead, slamming him down. Piccolo manages to recover, and observing the situation, Master Roshi wonders what kind of training Goku underwent with Kami, as he remarks to Krillin that even after using the tremendous Super Kamehameha, Goku's physical strength and endurance appear unaffected. Goku declares that Piccolo's increased size doesn't pose much trouble, and in response, Piccolo suggests he can become even larger, leaving Goku surprised. Piccolo then powers up once more, growing to a more enormous size, whereas Goku once reached Piccolo's ankles, now he barely reaches his toes as the monster laughs maniacally, confident in his imminent victory. Yamcha tells Goku to get away immediately, but Goku sees an opportunity and jumps up to Piccolo's face, unleashing a Kamehameha away from the fighter and launches himself into his mouth. Piccolo chokes and gags, eventually spitting Goku out. In a strategic move, Goku tosses something over to Tien, revealed to be the bottle containing Kami. Piccolo curses Goku, and as Tien opens the bottle, Kami is released from his confinement, much to Goku's pleasure. Perplexed by the turn of events, Kami questions the situation, while Bulma voices her shock at the existence of two Demon King Piccolos. Recalling his deflected evil containment wave, Kami realizes Goku's clever plan, a fact explained by Master Roshi. Annoyed, Piccolo reverts to his normal size, glaring angrily at Goku before he suddenly rushes in to attack as both he and Goku disappear. This development shocks Krillin and the others, including Kami, who notes Goku and Piccolo's movements are too rapid for even his eyes to follow. Elevating their battle to the skies, Goku and Piccolo engage in a fierce aerial exchange, the swiftness of their blows leaving everyone astonished. In the midst of the confrontation, Piccolo lands a series of rapid strikes on Goku, sending him hurtling back toward the ring. However, Goku counters by propelling himself back up using a Kamehameha fired from his feet. Ascending into the air, Goku delivers a powerful double-fisted blow to Piccolo's face as the fighter plummets toward the arena floor. Piccolo stops himself though and retaliates by unleashing electrical blasts from his antenna, severely injuring Goku as he descends to the ring. Piccolo makes his way toward Goku, and as Goku hits the ground, he attempts to rise in pain, noting he let his guard down. Piccolo lands swiftly and prepares to deliver a final blow to the weakened Goku, but just before the punch lands, Kami intervenes, having rushed into the ring and intercepted Piccolo's strike. Determined to defeat Piccolo together, Kami urges Goku to join forces with him, but Goku declines, much to Kami's surprise. Goku asserts that he and Piccolo haven't finished their fight, and says that he doesn't want Kami to interfere. On the sidelines, Krillin is surprised as well, noting that if Piccolo isn't killed, the world is doomed, but Master Roshi, recognizing his former pupil's mannerisms, says to himself that Goku has never been one to recognize a global situation. Back in the ring, Goku tells Piccolo that to make up for Kami's interference, he'll let him have one free hit, and Piccolo obliges as he knocks Goku into the wall of the arena's remains, the fighter then noting that they're even now. With ease, Goku rises after enduring Piccolo's punch, casually remarking that it wasn't as effective as before. At the same time, Kami warns Goku about the potential dangers of not uniting to defeat Piccolo, but Goku remains resolute, expressing he'd regret it if someone else got in the way. Tien and Krillin support Goku's decision, acknowledging his past achievement in saving the world, and note that even if Goku loses, they can all band together to take Piccolo down. However, Piccolo cuts in, asserting that he's far stronger than the rest of the group, including Kami, a fact that Master Roshi confirms. Finally relenting, Kami concedes, but makes Goku promise that he'll take Piccolo's life, as when Kami dies, he can be revived with the Dragon Balls. Goku agrees and asserts his confidence in winning the battle. Piccolo interjects, questioning Goku's confidence, and the fighter asserts he knows all of Piccolo's techniques, so he'll win for sure. This statement shocks Piccolo, and on the sidelines, Kami thinks to himself that Goku has surely grown as a fighter, with his strength seemingly infinite. He goes on to say that Goku has surpassed even his own power and can surely win this fight after all. Infuriated, Piccolo asserts that he's 
significantly powered up since he and Goku battled three years ago, and says that Goku could never win against him. However, Goku claims his strength is superior. In response, Piccolo suddenly releases a massive blast toward Goku. Dodging the initial attack, Goku finds himself pursued by the relentless blast, prompting him to take to the air. Piccolo scoffs at Goku's attempt to evade, asserting that the blast will follow him wherever he goes. Descending back to the ring, Goku positions himself in front of Piccolo as the warrior revels in his presumed victory. However, Goku rushes toward Piccolo as the blast follows, surprising him as Goku swiftly dodges the attack before impact, allowing Piccolo's own blast to collide with it. This results in a sizable explosion, and when the smoke clears, the impact renders Piccolo's left arm useless, leading Goku to tell him to surrender. Contrary to expectations though, Piccolo smiles and defiantly rips his damaged arm from his body, much to everyone's shock. Initiating a power-up, Piccolo regenerates a new arm in its place. He then grows increasingly frustrated, noting that Goku has reduced him to a pitiful state and begins preparing a formidable attack to take the fighter's life. Realizing the implications, Goku urgently warns everyone to escape. Piccolo continues his relentless power-up, leaving Goku astounded by the unprecedented magnitude of his energy. Urgently, Goku instructs everyone to evacuate before it's too late, raising concerns about his intentions. Unwavering, Goku asserts his determination to endure Piccolo's onslaught, and Kami warns Goku to leave with them, as his pride isn't worth losing his life. At the same time, Piccolo finishes powering up. As time runs out for escape, Tien takes action, unleashing a tri-beam to create a sizable hole in the ground for everyone to seek refuge in. Amid the chaos, Launch, angered by Kami's reluctance to leave Goku, kicks him into the protective hole. Goku charges up, readying himself for the impending clash, and Piccolo finally releases an overwhelming shockwave, triggering a colossal explosion that decimates the entire island. The location is left in ruins, the ring tiles obliterated, and when the smoke clears, Piccolo believes he's emerged victorious. However, to everyone's astonishment, Goku remains standing, remarkably unscathed by the devastation. Climbing out of the protective hole, the onlookers cheer for Goku, defying Piccolo's assumption of victory. Addressing Piccolo, Goku declares that he's depleted all of his ki with his massive attack, confidently asserting that victory now belongs to him. Charging up slightly, Goku readies himself for his counterattack as Piccolo nervously questions what the fighter is planning to do. With little words now exchanged, Goku swiftly advances, elbowing Piccolo in the face and following up with a flurry of powerful kicks that force Piccolo to cough up blood. Goku then charges forward and relentlessly unleashes a powerful punch to the gut that leaves Piccolo writhing in pain. With his opponent now downed, Goku proceeds to ascend into the air where he charges up a colossal Kamehameha. Realizing the devastation to occur, everyone gets down as Goku lets out a mighty cry and unleashes the massive blast, scoring a direct hit on Piccolo and triggering a massive explosion. As the smoke dissipates, Goku gracefully returns to what's left of the arena as he stands in front of the sizable crater he made while Piccolo lies in the center unconscious. Urging the announcer to start the count, he rushes over and assumes Piccolo dead, but Goku asserts he's alive and Kami confirms. The count then begins, with everyone anticipating the match's conclusion. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. However, to their surprise, Piccolo rises before 10, unleashing a devastating mouth blast that pierces through Goku's shoulder. With a deep wound and bleeding profusely, Goku falls down, coughing up blood in the process. Piccolo, enraged that Goku remains alive, raises and stands over him, declaring his intent to launch a decisive attack that will finally end his life and avenge the great Demon King Piccolo. Stepping down on Goku's chest, Piccolo asserts his dominance as the fighter screams in pain. Tien, Yamcha, and Krillin rush to Goku's aid, but Piccolo thwarts their intervention by unleashing a blast of electricity, shattering the ground before 
for them. Undeterred, Goku rises, relieved that Piccolo missed his vital areas. Evading Piccolo's punch, Goku retaliates with a blow to Piccolo's gut, and Piccolo kicks him before they both pause to catch their breath. Confident, Piccolo anticipates Goku's eventual demise from the loss of blood, and lands an elbow to his face, knocking him down. Leaping over, Piccolo lands on Goku's legs, breaking them both causing him to cry out in pain. Goku's friends watch the horrible events unfold, and comparing the situation to his father's fight three years ago, Piccolo asserts that Goku is left with only his left arm, a mistake his father made and was defeated as a result. Piccolo then directs a blast at Goku's left arm, rendering it useless and leaving him unable to use his limbs to escape. Piccolo then declares his final attack on Goku and ascends into the air. Suddenly, Kami urges Tien to kill him to to ensure Piccolo's demise, explaining that he can't take his own life. Stressing the urgency, Kami insists that he can be revived with the Dragon Balls. Torn, Tien agrees, but Goku intervenes, urging everyone not to interfere and asserts his determination to win. In a climactic moment, Piccolo finally unleashes his devastating blast directed at Goku as everyone watches, now out of time to assist. Piccolo's formidable blast descends upon the motionless Goku, inducing panic among the few remaining spectators. A resounding explosion accompanies the blast upon impact with the ground, resulting in a large cloud of smoke and a vast crater in the remnants of the ring. The aftermath reveals an empty crater, and Piccolo descends to the ground, convinced of Son Goku's demise, believing him to have turned to dust. Witnessing Goku's apparent defeat, his friends become sad, while Piccolo revels in his proclaimed victory, exclaiming he's finally defeated Son Goku. Amidst the disappointment, Piccolo turns his attention to Krillin and the others, telling the group that he'll be uniting them with Goku soon enough. However, Krillin observes something peculiar in the distance and queries Tien about what he sees as well. Tien lets out an air of surprise, and flying behind Piccolo is Goku a distance away, shocking the Demon King. As Goku launches in, closing the gap, his friends let out a resounding affirmation, exclaiming that he's learned to fly. Goku draws close screaming to Piccolo that he's lost, and crashes into the Demon King with intense force as he's sent flying and coughing up blood. Piccolo and Goku both crash to the ground, much to everyone's shock. As Piccolo is left unconscious, Goku queries the announcer about Piccolo's potential ring out, and upon inspection, it becomes evident. The announcer then declares that Goku has defeated Piccolo, and is the winner of the world's 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. Amidst Goku's battered and bloody state in the former ring, his friends rush over, happily celebrating his victory. As everyone congratulates Goku, Yajirobe emerges from his hiding spot in the ground, now that it's safe to come out. The happy celebration turns to concern as Goku struggles to move, but Yajirobe reassures everyone, revealing he's brought sensu beans. Handing one to Goku, he eats it and rapidly bounces back to full strength. Goku then soars into the sky, happily exclaiming that he's won the Tenkaichi Budokai and is the new world champion. Surprised at Goku's healed injuries, Krillin states he thought the sensu were just for food, and Yajirobe wonders why he ate one without knowing what it was for. At the same time, Kami hovers over the defeated Piccolo, and Goku rushes in as the God of Earth prepares to land the final blow. Goku intervenes, and Kami insists insists on the necessity of Piccolo's demise, but Goku counters, suggesting they can merely defeat him if he causes trouble again. Moreover, if Piccolo dies, Kami would perish too. Tien proposes reviving Kami with Shenron, but Goku reveals Kami's lie as the demise of Kami would lead to the disappearance of Shenron and the Dragon Balls. The others question if this is true, but Kami falls silent and acknowledges his unsuitability for the role as Earth's guardian. He states that he's the reason Piccolo exists in the first place, and with his counterpart having already surpassed him in strength, he doesn't deserve to live. Master Roshi, however, disagrees, stating that the world is now at peace, and that the existence of relationships between Goku and the others is owed to Kami and the Dragon Balls. After composing himself, Kami tells Goku he's fortunate to have someone as wise as Master Roshi, and in a magical gesture, Kami fully restores Goku's outfit, highlighting the excellence of the Turtle School. Goku then calls for another sensu from Yajirobe, and feeds it to Piccolo, much to everyone's horror. In 
ingesting the sensu, Piccolo rises, fully healed as everyone runs away, questioning Goku's intentions. Goku tells Piccolo that if he dies, Kami will die as well, and laughing at Goku's perceived foolishness, Piccolo notes that he'll be back for him and his friends soon, and departs with laughter. Goku, however, thinks to himself that no matter how strong Piccolo gets, he'll always be one step ahead. Bulma reflects on Goku's growth since their first encounter in the mountains, and Chi Chi rushes over, embracing Goku, who everyone forgotten is newlywed. Kami then offers Goku the position of Earth's guardian, but he declines, stating he'd be completely bored. Shoutsu, bandaged but glad to see Tien is okay, joins the scene. Despite Kami's persistent request, Goku playfully sticks out his tongue and calls for the flying Nimbus. And so, with Chi Chi by his side, the two board and take off, bidding their friends a goodbye for now, and conclude the story of Goku's youth. The 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai is arguably one of, if not the best arc in all of OG Dragon Ball. It not only intertwines characters from past parts of Goku's journey, but is filled with intense combat between said characters and ends with a beautiful transition to the story of Dragon Ball Z. But what did you think of this arc? Did you enjoy it? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.